that great time of year where you can have a bottle of science. It all starts with yeast because yeast is what creates the fermentation, turns the sugar in the grape juice into wine. The way it does that is a little bit gross. So after a feed of sugar, yeast is a little organism that does a micro fart of carbon dioxide and then it does a little wee of alcohol, but that's what we love about bubbly. Those micro farts add up to about 11 grams of carbon dioxide. That's actually the equivalent of six liters of gas crammed into this bottle. That's why the bottle has to be heavy and why it needs to have this little thing at the top. This thing here called a muselet that holds the cork on. Normally when you ferment wine, you just let the carbon dioxide escape. But Dom Perignon by accident sealed the bottle and so the carbon dioxide got trapped. When he tasted it and had the first taste of sparkling wine, he said, I have tasted the stars. If your champagne's warm, the cork will come out faster, up to 50k an hour, a, a researcher in the University of Champagne found. If it's the right temperature, eight to 10 degrees, it'll only be 40k an hour, but still. Definitely worth taking precautions. Have a safe new year. Okay, let's get this party started. Loosen the cork. You ready, cameraman? Ooh, holy Apparently not. When you release the cork, the bit of gas that's at high pressure here expands rapidly. When things expand, they cool. It's called an adiabatic expansion, can take it as low as 80 degrees below where it started. So 10 degrees ends up minus 70. And that makes the alcohol and the water trapped in the gas condense, turn into a little fog. And that's what we see here. Minus 70 degrees just here. Important thing is the pour. You really don't want to slop it down the middle and make it go all frothy like a terribly poured beer. Look at all those bubbles disappearing. You see, the bubbles are very important because they carry the aromatic compounds from the wine. The character of the yeast, the winemakers call it, I think they're aromatic long chain chemicals. But that's what gives champagne that wonderful appeal over still wine. It's got bubbles that carry up those aromas. So you wanna slide it in slowly like that. That's a much better way to do it. But some people say that you shouldn't even use one of these flutes. They want this one here. Allegedly modeled on the left breast of some famous French woman, Marie Antoinette perhaps, or Bonaparte's wife, Josephine. So the Frenchman Gérard Ligier Belair at the University of Champagne, he actually studied these two glasses to see which one works better for the aromas. Using infrared imaging, he actually looked at how the gas travels above the wine. And in this one, he said, there's too much spillage. The carbon dioxide carrying all those aromas is disappearing down the sides. So that's no good. This one, well, it focuses it much better, comes fair up the nose, but carbon dioxide is actually a bit of an irritant, so it can be too much. You know, when you, when you do a little burp and you get that tingle, brings a tear to the eye. That's because too much carbon dioxide. So what Ligier Belair says is actually the middle ground, a tulip shaped glass. Something like that is just about perfect. Oh, that's a terrible pour. Let's have another go at that, shall we? It's the same process that makes the sea smell so beautiful when you're at the beach. As the waves break, bubbles get caught in the water and they bring up compounds and spray them into the air above it. So champagnes really like being at the beach. Ligier Belair calculated that there are a million bubbles that come out of a glass of champagne. And by pouring it badly, you're wasting tens of thousands of bubbles.
That is if you leave it to go that long. I certainly don't intend to. There's a rumour that goes around that when you've finished drinking and you want to store the leftovers, you just chuck a spoon in there. That is some of the most rubbish physics I've ever heard. What you really want to do is put it into a sealed container and cut down the amount of gas sitting above it which the carbon dioxide can escape into. So find yourself a little bottle, you could even use a jar, and just pour it into that, nice and gently so you don't lose too many bubbles. Less headroom at the top the better, screw it on good and tight, that'll keep the bubbles going. And have a very happy new year. Build up on science.